Yeah, and to come out the gate with it, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Normally, it takes uh, it takes a little bit, especially on a Sunday after uh, perhaps a late night, early morning for uh, Saturday to uh, to get rolling. Gear does seem to be doing a good job in this leg, though, uh, taking advantage of that start. Well, an opportunity for a pretty straightforward three uh, three fat close here, and he's already gone sideways on the uh, the nineteen. Needs to recover, and the window from Garrett. It's gonna turn this leg around, and Randy's well on his way now. With a leg to give, plays very aggressive. Not going back for any points. Garrett really needs to protect those 18s. Randy only needs a single mark to shut him down. Did a good job there with a the five mark. Decent position there for Garrett to take away that 17. Randy again with a leg to give. Go ahead. Yeah, he gets it done closing behind, but I I don't know. I, I think I'd have moved to the 15s. Try to snag some additional points. He's going to need the same shot to have just a one bowl lead.
He would absolutely love if this next one was a double. And he's not going to do it, so Randy's going to come to the board for a single bullseye to win this one two straight. Oh, and he doesn't do it. Garrett counting his lucky stars. Only two bulls needed from Randy. And now two bulls needed from Garrett to send us to a third and deciding leg. There it is. Here we go, deciding third leg. I don't know about that decision, even if he went up there and closed that 18. Probably best case scenario though for for Garrett in that uh, that exchange. N needs needs to find a trouble eighteen here though. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do it. So early doors here, all one way traffic. I think that third dart was a conscious big fat one to make sure that uh, the 18 was closed. Great shot.
Andy, a man on a mission this morning. So we do have the uh, the entire pro bracket here. Um, so we know a couple of the other first round uh, matchups. Looks like we've got uh, Dan Burke taking on Brandon Kessler, Steve Hilger taking on Jeff Johnson, Greg Fontaine taking on George Daniels, Dustin Holt taking on Cody Willis. The winner here will take on Tasha Nicole. Our good friend Joe Hedrick taking on Trevor Fedwa. And Daryl Rehan taking on Brett Davis. Oh, and I'm sorry, uh, Danny Oates taking on uh, Kerry Thaxton. So that wraps up uh, the breakdown of our pro bracket this morning as it stands. We hope to bring you as much of the action as we can.
Yeah, so I apologize. We we missed the George Gregg match, but uh, we're gonna get the the George Holt match. And I just got a half a picture of the bracket from the uh, the team on the ground there. And uh, I can confirm that uh, Kerry Thaxton um, won his match over Danny Yotes um, as well. We'll try to get some uh, other pictures of the bracket so we can give you some updates on any uh, any of the matches we don't get to watch. In the meantime, we're going to enjoy this one here between two of the uh, the big hitters out there in South Bend. And I think we talk about it at the beginning of each one of these pro events, but uh, but that four four and a half mark a turn standard is really what uh, what we're eyeing that uh, that we expect to see these players throughout the uh, latter part of the tournament. But we've already seen Dustin Holt and and Randy reaching those heights early in the day, so we might be in for. Uh, Pretty big clash at some point. We can also confirm Joe Hedrick uh, defeated Trevor Fedwa in the uh, in the first round matchup they had, and um, Brett Davis took out Daryl Rehan. Um, so that set up a uh, matchup with Kerry Thaxton that we already uh, confirmed earlier. So pro bracket moving right along. George continuing to struggle here. Certainly not the standard we expected from him.
small, small opening here for uh, for George. It's getting a little wider. Great shot there. Seven mark on the 16. See if he can continue to find that that trouble 16 and, and make opportunities here. And that's not going to do it. Missing the single dart at the at the 20. especially with the standard that, uh, that Dustin's playing at. So 40 points will come off of there. Dustin takes the 16s. Yeah, pretty standard shot there from Dustin with a leg to give. Doesn't need to uh, be overly aggressive. And George, again, just not finding the troubles with any regularity to, uh, to turn this one around. With the way it's shaped up, the leg was really lost in the first probably six or nine darts from George. Giving up the uh, the start.
cruising out there in South Bend. <laughs> kind of uh kind of an improvement for uh for Porky. Well, I'm glad he's continued the uh, the rando back uh, stem and flight um, combo. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I could I could definitely see pulling those out of a cup uh, and handing over my ID to uh, <laughs> to get those. So we did just get confirmation that uh, Corey Thaxton defeated Brett Davis. So he now awaits uh, Magneto, uh, Randy Fern, taking on Joe Hedrick. Um, so Randy got past uh, Tasha Nicole. And, of course, we're watching uh, The Hammer and Porky go head-to-head -head here. The winner taking on Dustin Holt. So potential partners playing against each other as uh, Dan Burke and, and Dustin playing together this weekend. Certainly not the leg uh, Steve wanted here, but uh, he he'll know. No harm, no foul. Completely, as he will get to start in the uh, second leg, have a chance to uh, redeem himself. Some 
consistent darts though from from Dan Burke will uh, will concern him. And just like that, maybe I'm talking a little too soon. Yeah, I can hit two marks before you hit nine. And in this particular case, he was 100% correct. Yeah, we'll see if that settles him in for the rest of the leg. Just how much pressure will he be under when he comes back? Probably best case scenario. Can't uh, can't expect much less than three from uh, from from Dan. Well, hell, m most of these uh, these pros. Man after my own heart there, switching from the 19s over to the 17s. Yeah, great seven mark shot there from from Dan up a leg, so that uh, pressure just mounting on Steve. Oh, 
Oh, and a loose third from Dan. So the door swings ajar for Steve. He's going to take that point lead. Would you have taken a shot at the 18 there? little unlucky there for Steve is that uh, second dart doesn't register. Well, I'm sorry. It does register as a four. See the frustration there. Mount throws the last one into the 18. Really giving, giving Dan the entire board to uh, to work with, and he's going to choose to close the corners. Only finds the treble 16, so. Porky most lightly um, from the from the. Previous shots will go straight to that bullseye. Great shot, five bullseyes. Look at that. A little bit more pace to the throw there for uh, Porky. Putting in another uh, three bullseyes. So eight in the last two turns. And with that. Yep. Going to come to the board with uh, probably the easiest shot uh he thought he was going to get here at the end.
Check his weight. We we need. <laughs> No, it, it no, it just it seems like uh, especially the two that he's had misregister on the twenty, um, it's almost the exact same hole, just low that uh, that's given him the triple. Dustin in a mood. Dustin, no doubt, telling him, uh, don't worry, I'll make this quick. Dan coming off a decent performance in his last match. <clears throat> Above that. Dustin now cleaning it up too, uh, too straight there. At the end, um, just over four and a half marks for him. So he's going to start the board up and Dan's going to get us started. Just got a update. Looks like George Daniels defeated Daryl Rehan. Joe Hedrick lost to Randy Fern in that uh, quarterfinal match on the winner's side. That sets up a matchup between Randy and Carey on the other semifinal, which we will be bringing to you next. And sends Joe to the loser's bracket where he will take on Brandon Kessler.
Dustin telling Dan how lucky he is he missed that 18. You can tell from the body language, I think both of these players are really rooting for each other. And are either shocked or disappointed when uh, when they miss uh, the easy shot. You see Dustin's reaction there as Dan goes wide on the 20. I will say that if there is one kink in the armor of uh, of Dustin, who who for the most part does extremely well at these uh, these uh, regional tournaments, um, as he does seem to take some of the the singles or or like one dart closes kind of for for granted. Also seems to be a little bit quicker pace than he uh that he normally throws at. Finally finding trouble sixteen there, but Dan really uh pretty good hold on this leg especially now shutting down that 16 back to the 17s for some points and finds another trouble so big seven mark there sorry six mark uh scored Leg number two. This is for a decider. Dustin won the first one too fast for you, Dad. <clears throat> and there it is. So... All important cork. Both these players are going to get to flex their cork muscle. Get us started in this deciding leg. This is a semifinal, so this will be for the king seat match. And an opening straight away. This Dustin Hole only finds two 20s.
Yeah, what a gift back. And there's the dagger Dustin was looking for. Dustin gonna stay straight Dustin. for three singles. I still don't think I have levels. Dan coming on strong here at the end of the the leg. Dustin now trying to get those points back. He does manage to get the point lead. See nothing. Oh, you did. So, leaving himself a lot to do here. To make some inroads if he can score heavy on that bowl, but four numbers open. Cuts that down to three. But just not enough done on the bullseye. So, Dustin uh, here going to probably bring this home. Good fallout gives him the point lead. So one bull when he returns, he will return. Just will he need to hit any points? That's all up to Dan here. Needs to find a double to make him throw two darts. Doesn't find the double, so Dustin now. Single bullseye to win this one in three and head to the king seat match. We did have them hold the other semifinal, so we will have Corey Thaxton and Randy Fern. Coming up next, there it is. You see the uh, players embrace. Tough fought match. Dan Burke is not out. He'll head over to the uh, loser side of the bracket. See if he can't battle his way back to take on either uh, maybe Randy Fern or Dustin in the uh, third match. 
um, perhaps getting all the way back to that uh, that final. But stick around. We will be back with uh, more darting action. In the meantime, go check out uh, bullshooter.com, spider360.com for uh, for some additional uh, info on uh, Bull Shooter and all the swag that, uh, that we've got. Um, I know the, the information for Chicago, uh, the end of May, was just posted as well. So start to plan that trip. Come out, hang out with us, see us. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to bringing you more darting action this afternoon. Stick around. I'm going to turn it back on, all right? Oh, okay. Test. Test. Yeah, I've got level.
All right, we are back, Facebook land. We've got our other semifinal, Kerry Thaxton taking on Randy Fern, Randy Magneto Fern. Now, look to me like Kerry snagged that bull. Yep, Carrie's gonna get us uh, get us started now. Randy been one of the form players that we've seen on the uh, the feed um, today, so it'll be interesting to see how Carrie's doing and if he's got the firepower to uh, to match what we saw earlier in the day from uh, from Randy. Randy gonna look to punish the two mark open from Carrie. And he's just going to follow it two marks himself. Lots of late Christmas gifts going out today. Good last there from Randy to rescue his uh, second shot. And while Kerry does have the lead, he's not going to feel real good about how he's playing right now. Wise Close shot there. 20. I felt like a little desperation from Carrie. Yeah, trying to close, uh, close there instead of moving to the eighteen this point he's got to get something going he has been waiting a little while with uh with randy being a play-in match in that very first match we had on the stream and then um that bracket just being a little behind carries being a little ahead so maybe he just needs to kick off a little bit of the rust from waiting but there he does find his first triple of the leg Yeah, nobody wants to go down uh, one nil in a race to two, but uh, he'll know he'll he'll get another whack at the start, even if uh, he isn't able to turn this one around. So, a little bit of a saving grace in that uh, in that regards. Just too many loose. Who starts around those uh, those triples? on a five mark. Randy looked to be playing pretty conservative there, just putting in three singles. Again, misses the big number. Had an opportunity to to put Randy really under uh, a little bit more pressure. As it is, he comes to the board with the point lead.
and is able to push that bull as well. Desperation here for carry in the first leg. Good final dart there, closes the bullseye. If Randy doesn't finish it or push the bull again, he could get a whack at it. But easy peasy hat trick there for, for Randy Fern to take this first leg. And as we talked about this format, Kerry Thaxton is going to get to start again. Trying to even up this match. Well, much better start this time around for Carrie, putting in four twenties, closing and scoring. But a much better start for Randy as well as he puts in a, a seven mark on the uh, on the nineteen. A pile of twenties back at him. So good exchange here early on in the second leg. Carry holding his own against this firepower from Randy. Carry playing a little aggressive there, taking a stab at the 19s. But he's only going to hit three singles this time around. Yeah, down a leg. I don't, I don't think that's the the play. That said, if you told me you didn't want Randy to live on that 19, I get it. Looks like we got some Randy fans in the comments. Some fandies. Yep. We are being told that after this match, our king seat will be set, but we're going to jump over and get a, uh, a loser side match before we jump back to the king seat. We should be getting Porky and uh, George Daniels. Randy finds the triple A team with his third, who increases point lead to 46. Gary's going to have to get going here quickly. And he's really blocked that triple. Slides way to the left. Oh, and I thought he got there. Well, I thought he did, too. He put a really good dart on that. But only three singles, so nothing hurt for Randy. Carry again, missing a, a big number. A 
and the way Randy runs. Great shot there. Seven mark. Pushing that average up towards Rele the five. Yeah, relegating carry down to that 15. We kind of called it early on based on our first two matches that Randy and Dustin Holt seem to be uh, playing at a standard that would be hard for the other players to keep up with. And here I think we're seeing it, and that's exactly what's going to end up happening if Randy can pull this match out. It will be him against Dustin Holt in the king seat match. Well, yeah, I think I think we've seen enough of these uh, these matches that, like, seeing people come out firing in four and a half, five marks a turn, is not very common. So when we saw two people straight away, it was in opposite sides of the bracket. It was uh, it was a pretty pretty easy call from from there. Not that anyone in the middle couldn't play, just uh, I think I think any dart player playing on a Sunday can relate to uh, a few slow starts. Carrie's still battling, but too little too late as Randy's only going to need three bulls for the win. And there she is. Your winner in this one, Magneto, Randy Fern. For Carrie Thaxton, he will move over to the loser side where he will have to battle his way back. And as I said uh, earlier, we should be getting Porky and George Daniels. Very shortly. In the meantime, please check out bullshooter.com for past tournament results, future events, uh, even the history of Arachnid and the uh, the Bullshooter Tour. Anything like that for information, check that out. And Spider360 for all of your favorite Arachnid gear. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
they are moving quick out there in South Bend. I'm I'm over here in Ohio freezing. And these these players are getting to the board. We got George and Porky taking uh taking a stab at one another here in the losers bracket of the men's pro division at the Bull Shooter Regional over there in Indiana. Porky leading out with a big five mark. And George flighting out on his third. So clearly these players uh, learning a little bit of a lesson from from yesterday. Um, I can't blame can't blame them specifically, but um, certainly a little bit slower uh, play. We saw a lot more warm up darts yesterday on the uh, on the feed. So good to see these players uh, getting after it. And I know uh, those of you in Facebook land certainly appreciate a little bit quicker game to game transitions. George still a half a mark below three solid, so and going second, so not uh, not a good sign early doors here. Keep you updated on our bracket. So George did beat Harold Rehan and Porky beat Trevor Federwell. So the winner of this will take on Kerry Thackson. And then on the top side of the loser's bracket, Garrett Rakowski beat Brett Davis. And Brandon Kessler beat Joe Hedrick. So the winner of that one will take on Dan the Hammer Burke. And then following this match, we will have our king seat match. So, yeah. Progressing right along. The uh, Looks like the women's bracket is down to the top eight on the winner side so it's uh, moving as well and generally what we try to do is uh is play out as much of the pro as we can and then we'll circle back and catch any of the open or women's matches that uh that we can towards the uh towards the end of that uh that event so as dj mentioned we'll have the king seat and then we uh we may be back for at that point even the uh the third place match and run that out to the final but the way the the brackets are shaping up we should be able to catch uh some of the final rounds of the uh the women's and or the uh the open George put in a five mark there. Pulls the averages to equal, but because he had such a slow start, still trailing. Although Porky going to leave the door open here a bit. Down and score and doesn't close the 15s or get the point lead. George could uh, go for the gamble. Well, he's going at it in a riskier way. I think you take that first start at the triple 20. If you hit it, then you know you only got two singles. If you miss it, you can go back to the 15th to try to increase your point lead. So now Porky with a relatively easy shot to get the point lead and close the 15s going into Bulls. Yeah, Steve does miss that final dart. George going to find two doubles after a wayward first. Yeah, taking the point lead. Yeah, and you see the shake of the head back there from George. That that treble 20 was painful. Pushing it out to three bulls to get the point lead again. But 
but if they continue to exchange 60 points for 75, that does favor George. George once again finding George a third dart double bull. Yeah, big, big last. Continuing to uh, to move that pressure back to Porky. Steve really needs to find a treble in his first couple of darts and and try to get a whack at that uh, that bullseye. He's gonna stay there with all three of. Add a hundred points to Oh, and George, oh, and George takes hard. a whack at it. Honestly, given the way this leg transpired. If you told George about halfway through that he was going to get one dart or a triple for the win, he'd have taken it. But still not out of it now. As he could get another dart or two. Needs two bulls to get the point lead. Yeah, George playing strong on that bull continues to... Uh... Put pressure on on Steve. This may be a, an opportunity to put a little distance between the two of them, have it stick. Maybe a bullseye shot here at the end. That looked to me to be another 20 and just uh, flat it down. Maybe a little bit of indecision. You want to go bull, you want to go 20, so you land right in the middle. I think a little impatience there from from George. Is going to Taking a swing up at that 20. And a nice hat trick finish there from Steve. Yeah, I think George got a little impatient there at uh, at the end. I mean, another bull wouldn't have pushed it, but I I don't know that Steve would have felt comfortable with uh, with that small of a lead to not uh, to not leave the twenties. But as it stands, Steve uh, up one nothing, and George uh, gets us started with a four mark. Looking for a path for those nineteens. Those managed to uh, find a triple and a single, but trailing by eight points. Both players averaging a five point five.
You can see the frustration there from George. George, 0 for 5. Make that 0 for 6. Gork, you looking to punish. And he does. Big 7 mark right there to really take control of this leg. Writing looking like it's on the wall for George as he shakes his head. He should be nice and comfortable at this point. Yeah, you really wouldn't note it from those uh, first two darts. Heck, three darts there. Taking his foot off the pedal a little too much. But lots, lots to do for George Daniels here if he wants to get back into this leg. Save. Going for big fat 16. Porky really walking this one home after doing uh, a bulk of his triple hitting in the uh, early to mid portion of this leg and a chuck up at the 18 for George I think sees the uh, writing on the wall here hat trick will do it He finds the three bulls after a good fallout into the 15. So, unfortunately, George Daniels eliminated from the tournament. We will head over to our king seat match between Randy Fern, Randy Magneto Fern, and uh, Dustin Holt. And in the uh, two fifth place matches, we'll have uh, Kerry Thaxton taking on Porky here, and we will await um, the winner of Garrett and Brandon Kessler um, to take on um, the hammer in the uh, the other loser's bracket semifinal. So lots of uh, darting action still to come here. Um, we already see Randy showing up to the uh, board. We don't expect this break to be very long. So stick around. We'll uh, bring you that king seat match here very shortly.
All right, we are back for our king seat match. A little bit longer than we thought it was going to be to uh, to get these two up and running, but we've got uh, Randy Magneto Fern taking on Dustin Holt, and uh, an open frame from uh, from Randy off the bat. Dustin following with three, but uh, chatting a little before this. Uh, I think we have to tip Randy here as the most consistent player so far uh, on the stream today. Well, today and honestly for the weekend, um, yesterday in the, the pro doubles, he and uh, partner George pulled off the, the double dip where I would say Randy was um, the most consistent in that match as well. So yeah, after that early uh, only two mark start, Randy already uh, back with a, a lead and a number. And a single mark from Dustin. So Randy, nothing holding him back here. Just going to look to put some distance between him and Dustin and does just that with a nice five mark. Last there from Dustin to get the point lead, but only by three points. Still advantage Randy. Only three marks there from Dustin, so another opening for Randy. As he finds a first dart treble. And since that opening two mark, really been uh, off to the races here in this opening leg. can do here needs five bulls to take a marginal point not gonna happen so two bulls needed for randy to take leg number one and be halfway on his way to winning the king seat Dustin will lead us out in leg number two. Dustin going to make the same mistake Randy did in the first leg. Not even closing the 20s. Now Randy in a much more comfortable position. With that first leg under his belt. Oh, and he's not going to get credit for anything on that third dart. A reprieve granted to Dustin. Takes pretty pretty good advantage of it. Come 
Randy only gonna follow three singles. So advantage. Dustin here in leg number two. Yeah, Dustin stays on there after missing the uh, the second dart. I like this one. Randy now finds it if he finds a treble. Yeah, either way, I like the shot choice though. Get rid of that twenty. Don't want to continue battling against the twenty. Most likely, Dustin will now go for the uh, the close behind. And because he wasn't able to close as well as trip the new number, you're now in a position to close and score with a triple. Solid five mark there from Randy. Pulls him back within eight points. Pressure back on Dustin. Dustin just not finding the troubles with with the regularity that we we saw earlier in the day. And Randy, even though uh, not quite at the heights that, uh, that we've seen him either, definitely uh, a half a click uh, to a full click ahead of Dustin. And two more missed big numbers. May see another aggressive dart at the 18. Oh, he does, but it's not going to find it. But rectifies it quickly with a trouble 17. Cheeky and move ahead rather than going for the 18s. Almost conceding the leg. Yeah, terrible body language then from, from Dustin and yeah, to not shoot at the uh, the open 18s there the last time up. Let me see, shaking the head. I think he'd press the button if uh, if he could. But I think Randy's noticed the same kind of body language and uh, hasn't really had that same, like, step on their throat mentality he's kind of let up a little bit as well does shut down the bull so one-way traffic here in this men's king seat match randy now five marks away from making it official as our king seat holder dustin uh gonna have to battle it out against our four remaining losers or at least one of them to have an opportunity to come back to, to play. Starts on the table before Randy throws. 
sees that he throws the first dart into the tent, goes to retrieve him, and then Randy snags the triple. <laughs> so, Randy Fern, your winner here in the King Seat match. And Dustin will, as you said, play for the third place match. We will uh, we'll see if we've got the semifinals going over there again. Uh, stay tuned for the, the crowd shot.
Corky just uh, edged out Dan Burke there by a hole on the initial cork. See the two embrace. Oh, the other way around. I'm sorry. Uh, so Dan Burke will get us started here in this best two out of three loser takes fourth match. And stick around. I know we've got uh, Dustin Holt waiting on the wings for the winner of this. And uh, Randy staying close for that uh, final. So we should be able to run through these last uh, three matches relatively uh, quickly for you. Bringing you all the darting action here from the pro event at the South Bend, Indiana Regional the Bull Shooter 2021-2022 Series. After a gift open from Dan Burke, Steve Hilger going to return the favor. It looks like we're having some audio issues. All right, audio check. Again, I, I don't know uh, what exactly is going on with uh, with that issue. Good Seems night. to be maybe uh, something with the, the connection of going on and off mute. slow here in this one. <laughs> they should unhug. Does anyone know Steve and Dan's uh, sponsors? We just tag them. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> you see a shrug of the shoulders. This is just one of those uh <clears throat> one of those legs. Both honestly will be comfortable. Uh, knowing that uh, a purple patch here could turn this leg around for either one. Well, and honestly, if one good player hits a big shot, I wouldn't be surprised to see the other one follow with one. Tends to take something like that to spark both players on. Time being, Dan, with a uh, decent lead in this play.
Steve now is with a 10-point lead in these two numbers. Gonna get rid of those 19s. And we looked at the 17 for more score, but unsuccessful. Appreciate the uh, chat keeping us posted on the uh, the audio. Again, there's only a couple of things that we can do to uh, to adjust those things. So we'll continue to work through that. We see Dan continuing to chip away at this leg. Working now, trolling by a good bit. We need to get her figured out. How, how funny is that? <laughs> uh, Steve takes the time to uh, pop into the chat <clears throat> to apologize for uh, for the horrible <laughs> darts. <laughs> I think uh, I think Dan may have jumped on uh, Steve's phone and uh, and apologized as well. But regardless, job done in the first leg. Dan with uh, uh, the... Yep, it looks like, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to call that the uh, motivation leg. So Steve going to get us started here in the second. Um, again, this is for loser takes fourth. Um, so the winner of this will take on Dustin uh, to see, see who heads back to uh, face off against Randy Fern. And we see fly it out there for Steve Hilger as the woes continue. And even though uh, neither player really off to the races, Dan's got to feel a little bit better as he did get the uh, first one under his belt. Yeah, neither player really at the races so far in this leg. Not sure what's happening off to the left of the players. But something caught their attention. Yeah, it doesn't seem to take much for, uh, 
for these players right now. Things starting to warm up a little bit, though. Steve with a good shot there. Establishes the lead, gets another number. What can Dan do with that 18? Needs to pressure Steve so that this is not all one-way traffic. And a two mark I don't think is going to do it. Steve most likely will try to clean up that 18. He's aggressive, goes at the, the treble, finds it with the second dart. And then on to the bull. So only a four-point lead, but those open numbers lingering behind Dan Burke. Does find a triple. I was just going to say, he doesn't seem to have the firepower to uh, to fight back against this right here, but maybe that's the, the shot that sparks him into uh, into action. Trying to make short work of it. Going at the 16s as soon as he has the point lead. So still an opening for Dan. And there's a good shot there from Porky. Getting that point lead, taking the 16 away. Relegates Dan down to the bullseyes. Not able to close, so... Porky now, little to no pressure here, just needs a hat trick. And is able to do enough to get the point lead, but only by 17 points. So Porky Shirley now just needs one bull and one mark. Well, he's going to have to use both in the next two. And there she goes. So we are tied up at one leg apiece. And hopefully the third leg is better than the first two. I don't put Daniel Cam on.
So, thus far, this match has uh, gone with throw. So we're going to see by far the best start from either of these players. But Dan opening with seven mark. Porky just a hole and a half away from uh, from tying that. But as it stands, Dan keeps up this standard. It's going to be one-way traffic in this last leg. And he looks in the mood. Pile of marks. Takes the 19 and the 17. Steve needs that seven mark follow. There it is. So DJ mentioned it earlier. Sometimes all it takes is uh, for one player to start playing well to uh, to spark the other into action. Because Porky's going second in this leg, he's probably going to have to throw about a half a mark better than Dan in order to have a real chance. First or second dart, triple 18 will open up some options for Steve. He doesn't choose to leave, stays there and finds seven. Just a little bit more aggressive than Steve in that in that spot. I would have taken a whack at that twenty. That's everybody in the room's favorite number in cricket. There, there. Steve takes a shot at it. That was fun. The triple. So just like that, you really see a momentum shift from. Like Dan kind of having that 20, you feel like he's probably going to win this leg. And that triple kind of turned it to where Porky now, 31 point lead, has the bigger number. I thought Dan was going to respond there, opening up with 51 points on the first start, but was unable to hit the two single 18s. But now this game feels a lot more equal than what it did when Dan had the 20. Taking advantage of those 18s. Yeah, great standard in this uh, this final leg. I think what everybody kind of expected heading into this. It's going to be another one of those where one more big shot. Close and point lead. Can seal the deal for uh, for somebody.
Ooh, Dan takes a stab at the 18. Does manage to do the single. Yeah, get it from, from Porky. That's probably the last dart he's going to get at the 18. And look at this from Dan. Not going to find a single mark. That can spell disaster for Dan. Yeah, it opens up a, a, a very clean look at that 17. And any treble gives Porky a couple of darts left to, uh, to run away on that 18. And that's exactly what he's going to do. So good right now, even the miss hits. And the hammer getting nailed. Huh. You see the reaction there from Dan. Missing the big number, not even able to close that 15. So again, very clean, straightforward shot here for Steve. Yeah, I should play this pretty conservative. Just make sure he closes those 15s as he does. Big singles. Good last there from Dan, but more than likely irrelevant as Porky only needs three bulls to take the set in the match. And there it is, your winner, Steve Hilger. In a very uh, odd match, a very slow start in the first two legs. Decent standard there in the uh, the third leg. Dan just going off the boil there, allowing Steve uh, to come through relatively easily in the end. But uh, next up, we'll have uh, Steve Porky Hilger taking on Dustin Holt, who you already see jump into frame there. So we should be off and running very quickly. Don't go anywhere. We'll have the loser takes third and then, of course, the finale, the, the men's pro singles final following that. Which one of these men are going to take on Randy Fern? Stick around and find out.
just like that, we're back with our third place match. Where Porky won the cork. And opens with 220s. Now, a little bit of a hole after the four mark from Dustin, but he does manage to close and open the 19s. Yeah, big last there. Really putting the pressure on Dustin to to maintain, and he will with a seven mark on the 17s. Quickly as Dustin jumped into frame after that last match, you have to assume he was he was watching and he saw kind of the uh, the arc of that uh, of that entire match. And I know the last time he was on the feed in that uh, King Seat match, he was extremely frustrated. Probably like his chances in this one. But Porky not going anywhere. Seven mark of his own. Shuts down the 17 and cultivates that lead. Dustin showing how proud he was yeah. of his single 19. <laughs> Work, you can go straight at the Bulls rather than open a number or close the 18s with the point lead. That was fine, a double with the last. But giving Dustin the opportunity to tee off on those 18s. Build a big lead. No, Dustin's going to like to follow on the bull. Bit risky there from Dustin. Yeah, I'd take that one step further and say that was a mistake. See what kind of point lead Dustin uh, wants. Only three before he takes the bullseye. Yeah, really deciding that he didn't want to battle against the bulls against Porky. I'm beginning to think that I'm more of a aggressive cricket player than I thought I was. Cause I'm definitely throwing at that 18 after, after the trouble 16. And there's a five mark from Dustin follow. And now Porky has to battle those 16s against 18s.
Dustin taking a shot over at that 15. See Steve's reaction there is just too far away to feel good about it, but he straightens it out right afterwards. Finds four more. Yeah, it takes a one point advantage. So forcing Dustin to have to hit a 18 before he can take the look at the game shot. Dustin does get the job done with three singles. But down to the wire there in the first leg. Corky will lead us out in game two. Corky not going to make the same mistake this time. Closing that... Uh... 20 and 40 points. A nice seven mark follow there from Dustin. Nice aggressive shot there from Porky. Shutting down that 19, grabbing another 20 points. Dustin looking to respond on the 18s. Only finding four. Yeah, just He's low. That lead. Just low into the four on that third dart. Pile of twenties in response from Porky. Thought after the uh, the last shot, we may see a whack at the uh, the eighteens. Elects to stay there and makes the right decision. This time electing to shut down the 18s. Three singles. And here comes Dustin. Putting in a pile of 17s. To close and score 68. Giving Porky no room to breathe. Dustin staying hot as well. Firing back with a seven mark. Great leg here between these two.
Dustin finally taking a whack up at that 20. Only finds a single. Yeah, went for the gusto with that third dart. The right dart, but unfortunately only hitting a single. So Gorky now should load up that 20. But he's only going to find three singles. Yeah, five mark here could turn this around. Dustin been very hot on his first and second dart. There we see another first dart triple. And takes the 20. So great shot there from Dustin. This a must win leg for Porky. Did have a game shot. He's really wanting to get rid of that 16. Is he? Is he really asking Dustin for advice on what he would do? I don't I don't know. Was he second guessing what what scored or what didn't score? No, I think that was a what would you do with this dart? And I think <laughs> Dustin told him like I'd I'd go bull because I'm not gonna leave me three bulls for the win. All right, so a little gamesmanship. That's that's one way to do it. Have the other guy worry about uh, your shot. <laughs> I can't believe Dustin gave him an answer. I, I'd have been like, you should do whatever you think you should do. I'd go double six. That's what it should have been. <laughs> I totally Before buried. He does get the job done. To double six. <clears throat> stellar, uh, stellar second leg though, between these two players. Yeah, both above that four marks per turn range. Steve looking for some uh, additional information on, on how to open the leg. <laughs> it seemed to work. If you, if you've got Dustin thinking about what Steve should shoot at. <laughs> so I believe this is also a case where Dustin actually did not start any one of these legs. He did not. You're correct. Losing both corks and winning game one. Ooh, and Porky just a couple of holes away from a really uh, deadly shot there on the 19s. But as it stands, great shot for Dustin as he's going to shut down the 19s and the 20s. So Porky all the way down to the, uh, the 17s. After just six darts. Uh, 
Dustin playing it safe, making sure he closes the 17 behind. But now Porky has the point lead. And he is going to go for the numbers. Triple 18. Oh, just outside. Yeah, the question remains, when is uh, Dustin going to ask for Steve's advice? Oh, and that might be the shot. Steve really couldn't afford his last turn and is really going to have to do something special here in the last nine or 12 darts to, uh, to reel this leg back in. Otherwise we're going to have a rematch of Dustin Holt versus Randy Fern in our final Porgy now really needs a big turn. The beginning of it. Take the 18. He does. So we've got a 16s versus bullseye scenario. Oh, and Dustin missing the first two, and you see the frustration. Boiling over. Oh, what a last. Double ball. Great job recomposing himself. Steve does get the, the point lead. So Dustin needs to uh, find that bullseye. Falls out into the 16, and you can see the frustration, which I don't really understand. These are pretty straightforward shots for, uh, for Dustin. Maybe the confidence waning just... Uh, just a bit here. Great Steve. shot there from Porky, putting in 112. Now Dustin with no choice. He's going to need to hit what he's aiming at. He's only going to hit one bull. Porky now, if he can close the Bulls, we'll be in a great spot. Well, he does miss the Bull, but he misses nice into the 15, falls it with a triple. Which still increases that point lead and closes the new number. Yeah, so after being in a very commanding position, 
Dustin just going sideways the last nine darts. Porky putting himself within one bullseye. Unless Dustin can come up with at least three. Dustin no longer even has a finish. Gonna find four. Great last start there. Split the difference of those first two darts. Ooh, I do not like that shot. Well, after he missed the first start, he forced himself to have to do a triple. So, yeah, now Dustin with an opportunity to steal it needs five marks. What in the world? Double 16. Hmm. Could have guaranteed himself a shot at the triple 15, but instead, now Porky just needs two singles. There it is. Porky moving on to the finals. Unfortunately for Dustin Holt, he is eliminated in third place. But we will have that final with Porky and Randy Fern very shortly. Don't go anywhere. We'll be.
Shooter 36 Regional Tour. We've got in the king seat, Randy Fern battling against Steve Hilger. So Magneto, Randy, will have to be beaten twice. Two out of three, two out of three, in order to be denied the title. Randy has been sitting for a little while, but by far the foreign player we've seen today and even the weekend as he and his partner George Daniels won the Pro Doubles 501 yesterday. And actually, uh, Porky won the Pro-Am last night. So, the, uh, a battle of the two Pro event winners so far this weekend. Who will be the one to capture multiple titles? And aside from from Randy uh, just being the form player from start to finish um, so far, I mean, obviously that uh, that king seat and needing to be beaten twice, two out of three, uh, really makes him a, a big favorite here. Plus, you can't can't forget about all of the fandies in the chat. Yeah, Randy with a big following. Porky as well, but the Fandy's making themselves known. Find a triple eighteen. Still trails. Randy not mucking around. Trying to add some score. The natural transition from the eighteen is usually the twenty. A little surprised to see him move down to the nineteens. But nothing hurt as he's got a two number and twenty two point lead. to bulls that uh, we are so accustomed to from uh, from Steve now. And Randy got to put him at arm's length. Shutting down the first corner. 57 points plus the power close. So lots and lots for Steve to do here. Randy's going to shut down the 15th. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, Randy playing well enough that the uh, the scare of the three single bulls forcing you to have to hit triples doesn't really bother him because he's proven all day that he is averaging above a triple a turn. And I think that's even reflected in, in Steve's strategy there, taking a shot after the two bulls and stay instead of standing there. We've seen him time and time again, just pile in those bullseyes, hoping to get a shot. And here, I think uh, knowing that he needed to, to take yeah, a shot. Randy uh, himself in a little... Sorry, Randy putting himself in a little bit of a uh, tough spot here. Losing the 20 now. I would have thought he... I understand the, the lore of getting rid of the Bulls, but 
battling now the 16s against the Bulls instead of the 20s against the Bulls. I think I would have taken advantage of having the Bull. And again, he's still going to go at the Bull to leave Porky the shot. So very yeah. risky strategy yeah. here displayed by Randy. If Porky can finish up the exact shot that he just left Dustin in our third place match. And he's not going to get a look at it. So no harm, no foul for Randy. But really in a leg that he was running away with, he kind of made it way more interesting than it needed to be. Whew, and wisely, board management there taking the three fat 15s. But yeah, much, much closer than I think uh, even Randy was. Uh, was expecting there. There, there was. There's comfort, and then there's uh, there's playing with fire. And I think Randy definitely walked that line there at the end of that leg. An opening straight away for Randy. To try to sew this match up two straight and opening on the 20. And sure, Randy's firepower has been there all day, but the other thing that we've that we've really noticed about Randy, even those three fat 15s that he threw to finish that uh that last leg, he is not missing that big number very often at all. Porky managing to find a triple with his third. But the damage done on the last turn from Randy. And again, Randy putting in two triples. Yeah, so, so strong on this 13-inch board. No triple, but three straight darts. Yeah, honestly, I, I think Randy's average is not reflective of how good he's playing because he's taking opportunities to just throw three singles where it doesn't look like he's being very aggressive on the triple at all. No, his his board management throughout the day, he really knows his spots. Yeah, not afraid to take the three singles and know that that's the favorable shot. And applying so much pressure on the Porky to have to hit triples, that Porky's not even staying straight in the big number. So Randy, if he doesn't finish it up here, will at least be back may elect to go three singles once again well gets a little aggressive here yeah and as we Those brag him up 
yeah, as we brag him up, he uh, he loses a little patience. I think he definitely sees the uh, the finishing line. Porky's still needing something super special here in order to uh, to pressurize and turn this around. And I don't think that is it. There it is. Your winner, Randy Magneto Fern, taking the pro event there in South Bend, Indiana at the Bull Shooter Regional. My goodness, just... Uh, from from the very first streamed event or match that we had all the way there to the uh, to the end, wire to wire was the Randy was the standout. Any uh, final thoughts from you, DJ? No, I think that was a pretty deserved win um, from Randy. By far the best player all day, um, probably on the weekend. Yeah, I uh, a good display. We we see a lot of the staples from the Bullshitter Tour that we typically see, but. Randy taking home the uh, the pro singles on his home turf. All right. Well, in the meantime, um, we're going to go find some more matches in the uh, women's and um, open.
All right, we are proud to bring you the ladies' queen seat match in the ladies' event this morning. We have Haley Baylor and Michelle Jost taking on Sherry Maine and Taylor Gillum. And you see a speedy start there for uh, Michelle. Now Sherry going to get... Uh, Team name Hulk Smash up and running. So our first look at the ladies today. Not a whole lot of experience with uh, Haley. The other three I've seen play. Relatively consistent. All depends on how the day is going. We see two very straight darts there from Taylor and one one that got away from her. But both teams clearly to be in the queen seat match. Playing uh, extremely well as we see Michelle again firing in all three. Sherry does manage to find a bull with her third, but not getting very many to stick. Haley now trailing in this leg. They're putting in a hat trick to leave 50. This is open in, open out. So uh, everything in play for these ladies in terms of uh, finishes. The freeze rule also comes into play for these uh, these split games. So Taylor to the board for a seven darter. Eight it is with the treble 15 finish. Great leg from Taylor Gillum. We will now have a game of cricket. And Michelle and Haley will lead us out. Great third there from Michelle. And the uh, fourth place of the match in the lady side is already underway. So I'm not sure if we'll stick with this. I don't know where the open division is, but yeah, it looks like we uh, we are progressing here in the ladies with the queen seat. So there should not be much of a wait at all for whoever loses this match.
Taylor gonna open on that turn. Another rapid fire close there from Michelle. Taylor coming off for her open uh, round. Seems to be setting things straight. She's getting a five mark on the 17. Haley going to whip in two triples. Pushing Sherry Main all the way down to those 16s. Michelle can close these 16s. It will be uh, very likely that we're going to be playing all three. This is the 01 Women's Medley. So if, uh, if we get to a third game, it is 501 stacked. Sherry now needs to do some work on that bullseye. Try to reel in some additional points. Does get the close. But Michelle, three bulls away from taking it. She's going to grab some more points. No finish available for Taylor. She is, however, going to take the point lead just slightly with her two bulls. How aggressive is Sherry Main going to play? Very. She takes a whack at the finish. Probably go to Bulls now. Is not going to find one. Michelle and Haley, even though they have not scored a lot of points, seem to uh, be very apt to play a point game. As I say that, she puts in two treble 20s for 120 points. I think that's what they've been looking for for the last uh, six or 12 darts.
Sherry only going to reel back 50. I'm going to catch a couple of bulls. So now Taylor going to need five to take the point lead. Otherwise, Haley will only need one for the win in the leg. Now Michelle brings it all the way back to her, needing one bull. I feel like this is definitely going to go away, given the way she's played this leg. And there it is. So we are all knotted up at one leg apiece. Stack. Shell's right back in there with two of them. Good catch there on the third from Sherry. Same for Haley. Rescuing the shot with a final dart bull. Taylor with a hat trick in the opening leg of 501. She's going to keep her team in play in touching distance with uh, two bulls there. Michelle rapid fires two more bulls in there. Sometimes I have to watch Michelle very slowly to make sure she's not throwing with both hands. <laughs> She quick. Yeah, honestly, they, they talk about Ricky Evans being the fastest player in the world. I think Michelle could give him a run for her money. There's Haley with a big low ton, leaving a two dart finish. Pretty much a must hat trick here. For Taylor. Only finds one. So six darts from 107. Ooh, stayed on the bull to leave five. This is into the seven to set up a triple 16 out. And now Sherry needs to apply as much pressure as possible. Can she even leave a finish? Should go trip 19. 
just to make sure that she does, but she does not. So Haley now, triple 16 for the win in the queen seat. Looks like the loser of this one will be right back up against Team No Bull Hit of Savannah and Tammy. Michelle can put in a 16 right here as she does. She avoids that matchup, sending Taylor and Sherry to the loser takes third place match. So well played for those ladies. And we will have that third place match very shortly. In the meantime, don't go in.
We are back. We've got our loser takes third place match here in South Bend, Indiana, in our women's doubles medley. We've got Team Sherry and Taylor taking on Team Savannah and Tammy. Sherry leading us out there with a 66 open. Savannah now eyeing up the 301. And putting in a low ton. Solid open so far. In the uh, queen seat match, we did see Taylor go five out of six on the Bulls for an eight dart finish. See if she has the same level of consistency. She does not. Unable to find a single bull. Tammy now. She will find a low ton as well. So her and partner Savannah off and running. Sherry going to join the party with a low ton of her own. Yeah, down to a finish in that all-important one hole. Not going to find a bull. So Sherry with the first whack and an out here at 118. Probably see a 15. Yeah, missing the fat 18 to leave the bull. Tammy not going to find a bull. So Sherry now 56 for this first leg. And the loser takes third. Misses into the 10. 35, no finish. So she's going to clean it up. Getting some advice from her partner. She leaves a 19. So Haley now with a chance. 116. Savannah. Savannah, sorry. Oh, 
Oh, and just outside, leaving the 40. Oh, and Taylor getting a look at the double 11. Trying to pull the old Huckle Buckster. So Tammy now is going to need to do the same on 138. Old Bull double 19 needed. And a bit of a mistake missing inside would have froze. Yeah, true. I'm uh, not paying attention to that. And leaving that and at now, 69. Yep. Sherry knows she doesn't have to take it out, as Savannah will be frozen. But she'll want to take it out. Instead, busts. Savannah cannot take this out. She'll probably come bring it down, leave something in the 1 to 4 range, if she can. Looks like she's targeting the one. Just leave it at nine. And Taylor will get a look at 22. Lucky miss there for Taylor to not hit the double 14. Instead gets a look at the eight. down to the eight but she hits the double so tammy now another opportunity to snag this leg out from under taylor and sherry as we so kindly get our camera destroyed by somebody an unlucky miss there for tammy not going to have an option to, to finish. Should be doing some math here. I think there was an opportunity. Well, there definitely was an opportunity to freeze. So now big fat 19. There it is. Sherry Main going to finish it off. Sherry trying to steady the board, but it's actually the uh, camera back behind. And off to the leg of Cricket. Amy now going to look to put some points on the board, take away those 19s, and snag a 17. Great shot there from Tammy, putting in a big 7 mark. Let's 
See if Sherry chooses to go with the 17. She does. Gets the close. And an extra one for points. Bam is going to follow with a close on an 18. Shake of the head there from Taylor. Gonna regroup, see if she can find that trouble 18. Only a single though. Tammy to the rescue to shut down the 18. This again is our women's third place match. Winner will go back to the finals. To take on Michelle and Haley. Taylor coming up with a five mark on the 16s there to pull back within 15 points. But Tammy averaging four marks a turn coming to the board. Tammy's turn to get a little frustrated there. She's not going to find any marks. A big shot here could turn this leg around. Taylor, though, only able to find two 16s, just reeling back that point lead. Tammy coming off a, a window her last time up. After a fine first dart, unable to uh, make any slashes or inroads into that 16. Treble there from Sherry. Pressure over to Haley to retake that point lead. Needs at least two 20s. Flirting with the 12, though. Regroups and finds a 20. So, finally, Taylor coming to the board with the point lead. 
Depends on how aggressive she wants to play this. May take a look at that 20 to start. Back to the 16s. Back to... Oh, stays on the 16. So, I keep saying Haley. You guys are right. Savannah, I apologize. Now watch in our next match, you'll keep saying Savannah. <laughs> I'll get that one stuck in my Haley. head. I knew that was coming, Amy. You want to give it another shot? I don't know who this is. <laughs> so Savannah comes to the board. <laughs> Tripping the 18. Yeah, great shot Coming there from back. Savannah. Switching switching away from that 20, uh, which was which was eluding her. Savannah, that is. Amy going to have to get the point lead back. Oh, she's not going to do it with the first two. Or the third. Three single ones there for Tammy. So an opening now for Sherry to see if she can pull off the shot that Taylor couldn't with the point lead to close the 20s and 18s. She's going to be unsuccessful as well. So, decision to make, close the 20 or go back down to the 16s to increase the point lead. Does look at the 16. Savannah staying on those 18s. A little bit of back and forth. Yeah, Sherry and Taylor just uh, kind of chipping away here. That first start's going to give Taylor some options. She's going to play aggressive, uh, I think, for the spot. That was the, the right call. So Tammy just has the 18s now to score on. And through all of those exchanges, not uh, able to pick off any of the 16s. So when Sherry comes back to the board... Going to have a good opportunity here to take the point lead and shut down that 18 with a pretty straightforward shot. You see the frustration not being able to convert those first two. Chucks one up at the 18 and falls short as well. Does find an 18 with her third dart to increase the point lead. What an opportunity for Taylor. Battling away. Looking up. He's done with that 18. And comes back for 48 points. Great shot there from Taylor. And Tammy's going to have to get the ball rolling on the 15s. Tammy and Savannah have really let this leg slip away. And they bite back. Great shot by Tammy answering with a seven mark. Yeah, job not done for Sherry and Taylor. Sherry only going to reel back 16. 
So Savannah struggling this leg, but in a fine, fine place to take that uh, point lead and maybe some darts over at that 16 to have a big lead going into the bowl. And she does take the shot, falls a little short, but job done with another 60 points. third but it's not enough for the lead Tammy fresh off that seven mark see if she wants to close those 16s Sherry needs four marks Take this point lead. She's not going to do it. And we've got the back and forth happening on the 15s and 16s. Tammy straight away in the triple 15 again and shuts down the 16. Went back at the 15, but unable to hit anymore. But job done. And she takes the point lead and shuts the 16 down. Great three bull turn there from Sherry. So Savannah now gonna look to increase that point lead back. She's gonna come up big as she puts in five fifteens. So three bulls equaled by five fifteens. What a shot. Taylor. Gonna make it three bulls to three bulls, but Tammy, the hot hand, coming to the board first. She's only gonna hit one. We just saw Sherry hit three bulls on her last turn. If she does that again, they will win this match. She's only going to find one. So Savannah can finish it here. Only needs two. So she's dangerous till the last dart. A lot of flights in the way by that last dart. Taylor's turn. To take a whack at two bulls for the win. And this would be for the match. Oh, and you see the reaction. She thought it was good. It looked good. 
Bounced out of the center of the board, but Tammy now got to feel that this is a must-do. There will be no more opportunity for this leg. There it is. There Sews it up is. in style. We should be getting a cork. For a leg of 501 stacked. Savannah with the throw. So far, all three players finding one bull in their visit. Taylor gonna find two, but Tammy and Savannah still with the throw. He's going to put in a very timely hat trick. Big shot there from Tammy. Yeah, you got to think Sherry's got to hit at least two here. She's only going to find one. Decent fallouts, though. What can Savannah do to set this up? And look at that. Taylor's going to find three. Interesting spot. 156 plays 99. Would you rather be the 156 throwing or the 99 waiting? Tammy not going for the out. She's only going to find one bull. So now you got to think advantage Sherry and Taylor. Good miss. She's not going to take advantage. Steadly 68. And momentum shifts right back to Savannah.
So Taylor needs to finish this 68. Oh, and she doesn't find the bullseye and does not leave it out. So she's going to think on it. Maybe a three coming in, maybe an 11. We'll see what she wants to set up for her partner. But regardless, Tammy going to come to the board with a shot at 54, trip 18, to propel them into the final. Now the double. Tammy opting to go for the treble 12 and then the double 12. Where she only needed two single 18. If she were to throw low on the double 18, she would have just needed a single with her last start. But we'll see if Sherry can make her pay. Sherry now with 18 left. Now 14. Running all around the board. She leaves three. So can Savannah slash Haley take out 12? Oh my gosh, and she's going to find a double no. 12. So Taylor going to come to the board. Very unfavorable out in three. You only get one dart at this. No matter how you go at it, there's only one dart. <laughs> I don't know. You shoot the trip to one, find a single one. Nope. You only get one dart at this. Big <laughs> fat three. And that is the biggest, yes. fattest three. <laughs> Very unfortunate for Tammy and Savannah as they, uh, they gave away chances. But uh, for Taylor and Sherry, they now move into our ladies' final, where they will attempt to uh, to get some revenge for their loss in the queen seat match. And we will have that very shortly. In the meantime, check out these commercials.
All right, we're jumping into the women's final. We have Michelle and Haley taking on Sherry and Taylor. We saw Sherry get us started with a hat trick. Michelle going to come behind with a low ton. We just saw Sherry and Taylor win the third place match, so obviously they are the ones under the gun here. Shell and Haley have the queen seat, so they will need to be beaten twice. Best two out of three both times. Sherry with a puff of the cheeks getting ready to uh, take a look at the six darter. It's not going to happen, but she's going to clean it up. Come back with an opportunity to match her partner. Put in a eight darter. The very first 301 I think we saw on the uh, stream this afternoon. Michelle hot on her trails, though. Yeah. Now we start running into that freeze rule. Taylor putting in a big shot. Putting a lot of pressure here on Haley. That Sherry may not even have to take this out. Haley does manage to find a bull, but job done for Taylor and Sherry. So even if Sherry doesn't take this out. Michelle not able to take out the 81. Michelle going to bust behind, trying to leave one. Taylor looking at 83. There's the 33, now 50. And there it is. So another eight dart leg for Taylor. And we'll move into cricket. A leg that we have not seen Taylor and Sherry win. Uh, on our stream yet. They're 0 for 2 in matches. See the 5 mark open there from Michelle. Seems to be a little bit uh, different energy here from Sherry and Taylor. And as I say that, the, the blank following the five mark open. So going to be in some trouble here when Taylor comes back to the board, just how much Haley is going to determine. Haley going to put in three nineteens. To open the number, but Michelle, after opening with five, is going to flatline. So Sherry now will have a chance. Great shot there from Haley. Shutting those 19s down and closing the 17s.
Shell going five zero four for her three trips to the board. Good enough to get that point lead back. Sherry only going to find a single 18. And Haley not going to find a mark this time. See that average from Taylor. Definitely the form player on the board right now. It's going to match her average with a four mark. Here comes Michelle putting in a big old seven mark on the 20, scoring 140. Taking advantage of having those 20s. Taylor not going to get the lead, only finding two 18s. Michelle shuts down the 18s, but not able to get any more points. But they do have two numbers, the 20s and the 17s. Sherry going to close the 16s. Not getting any points, though, so nothing really hurt here. Haley can come up from behind and take that 16 away. Close any bleeding before it starts, but she's only going to find a mark. What can Taylor do with that open 16? The answer is find a trouble with a third dart. Rescues the shot. Sherry only going to be able to find two 16s. Does take a 13-point advantage, but not nearly enough. As Haley fires in a triple 20 with her third dart. And only a single mark there from Taylor. Michelle going to shut down the 16s with a double, the 15s with a triple, and just outside on the bullseye. So all but done. Take us to a decider in this first set in the women's finale. Haley just three bulls away. There's the finish from Michelle. 
Finding all three Bulls finishing with a double. So a critical game three coming in. We're going to see a cork and a game of 501 stacked. Start will go to Sherry. Paints all around that bullseye. I'm going to find 39 points. So already an opening for Michelle. This is a must win leg for Sherry and Taylor. Michelle and Haley looking to close out the title. Yeah, you see the reaction there from Michelle. Taylor right back into the bull with her first start. That's all she's going to come away with. Scoring 89, a couple of good misses there. Now Haley. Needs to find a bull. She does with her third to keep it close. Still anyone's game. But advantage Sherry and Taylor as they're going first. Sherry not going to leave it out. So opening now for Michelle. Set Haley up. She is not either. We've seen big shots from literally every one of these women. One time or another. It's just a matter of putting it in here at the end. And there it is. Just, just when I ordered it up. The hat trick from Taylor. How much pressure is this 48 going to be under? 140, a pretty straightforward out. But a single dart here for Sherry will take us to a second set. Jerry busts with her last dart, needing only a single, but finding the double 16. So Michelle, for the title, two bulls and a double top. Not going to happen. She brings it down. Can Taylor close it out? She's 
certainly can. First dart. The double dip is on. We are headed to the second set. Okay, following a short intermission for a restroom break, we are back and running. Again, we've got both teams now with one loss, playing a best two out of three medley. Whoever wins, wins the title. Shell after opening with a low tone, unable to find a bull in that turn, kind of leaving the door open for everyone. Sherry not really stepping through, not really scoring 36. Through. Scoring 36. Oh, but Haley gonna find but two Haley for a low ton. Two for a low ton. Out of the danger of freezing, danger we saw the freezing. last time. We saw the last time in the first set. First set. Taylor leaving out. Taylor leaving out. She absolutely can. Absolutely Great last can. two. Great last two.
Taylor now looking at 141 to try to steal this leg. Oh, and just oh, into the treble. Missing that triple 17. Wax the 86, two darts, bang, bang. So a 1 0 advantage for Michelle and Haley. And now a situation that we haven't seen so far on our stream in four matches. Taylor and Sherry having to win a cricket leg in order to stay in the match. And Taylor going to get us started. So a switch up here for Hulk Smash. Maybe they should have just needed to win a cricket leg the entire time. Taylor looking to do some work on those 18s. Job done. And then Michelle coming up behind needs to start something on the corners. And only a close. So again, in this must-win leg, Hulk Smash doing a really good job of keeping Michelle and Haley at arm's length. Haley does have a, a shot here. She wanted to be very aggressive. She could have closed and taken the lead, but she needs to hit the 16. Only going to find one. The third sails high on Taylor. Michelle now trying to open up those 15s. And she does find a third dart triple. Closing and scoring 30.
going to put in four of them to score 60 back? Oh, and Taylor going to come away empty-handed. So big opportunity now for Michelle. A couple of triples, and she'll take a 42-point lead into the Bulls. I mean, Michelle throws fast, but how did she know that second dart wasn't going to hit it like two seconds before she threw it? How did she know the first dart didn't hit it <laughs> and threw the second dart at it? That's what I want to know. But she threw the second one before the first one. Landed. I'm pretty sure you're right. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, makes makes both the first and second darts that much more interesting. Like, I tend to know when I miss like poorly, like a triple seven, but when they're on the wire, I don't necessarily know. She, she knew. Great last there by Taylor. Forcing Michelle to have to get some score back. She's going to get a pile of 15s. Yeah, electing not to go at the 18. Let's stay on the score. Haley doing just enough to take the point lead. Three singles now for Three singles now for Taylor. We'll take the lead and close the 15. So she likes to stay on the score. She's only gonna hit one. She's only gonna hit one mark. Michelle with another opportunity. Oh, and you see the reaction there. Michelle wanted to flop that third one into the treble 18 and be done with it. Sherry and Taylor just not uh, scoring enough on that 18. Maybe Haley can be the savior here. Oh, and she certainly tried. Taking a whack at that 18, even though only up two points. Same shot for Taylor, three. Similar spot. Last time she liked the last time she liked the Taylor, this time she closes the 15. Closes the 15. Smart shot there from Taylor, especially with Michelle coming up behind the form player on the board right now. Wanted to make sure her, her shot was as difficult as possible. Only finds a single bull. So Sherry now. Sherry now. 
Needing three bulls. Three bulls. To take this leg. To take this leg. She's gonna pull the ripcord and only come away with 118. <laughs> Not leaving anything to chance here. Continuing to push those bullseyes. Michelle going to reel back 75 of them quick. Sherry not going to find a thing. A little frustration starting to set in for Taylor and Sherry. Again, Taylor extending that lead. Shell with another three and a good fallout into that 18. Big seven mark from Sherry. 126 points. One bullseye, and there it is from Sherry to take us into a deciding leg in this ladies final. Will be one leg of 501 following this all important cork. Sherry shows first. Looks like we might have a tie. Oh, wait, everybody wants to take a look at it. Everybody run, running up there to see the tie. Jeez. They were both far enough out that Haley, Haley snuck another peek there. So again, last leg is 501 stacked. Interesting to see if uh, Taylor or Sherry comes out as there looked to be a switch there in the middle.
And it will be Sherry getting us started. Hulk smash on for the double dip with the darts and the deciding leg. Solid open there from Sherry. Two bulls a turn will most likely get the job done. Response from Michelle. Sherry coming off of the low ton, only going to find 43. So Michelle with an opportunity to take a lead here. And that's just what she does with a low ton. with a hat trick to leave 174. Haley's going to need to pick up her turn right here. Make up for that first round. Oh, and she's not going to. Only scoring 27. So 174 and 6. The situation for Sherry and Taylor. But Sherry wanted to get it done in three. <laughs> <laughs> a bit wayward with the last, but great effort at it. A double one at the trip 20. She got just a little overzealous. Yeah, showpiece uh, finish was on the cards there. Fifty-eight to do. Taylor going to leave 20, two match darts, three match darts for Hulk smash in total. And you got to think that this is, this has got to go away. Michelle coming up behind with 35. And there it is. The double dip. Hulk Smash taking the women's title. Congratulations to Taylor and Sherry. Commiserations to Michelle and Haley. Going all the way to the final leg of the final set. We are going to take a short break while we uh, queue up the men's final. Uh, men's Open is uh, coming to you here shortly. We'll have names in that match uh, very shortly. We already dropped the bull shooter link in the in the chat for our next regional in uh, February. So feel free to uh, click on that, grab the uh, the details. But we will be back very shortly with the men's final.
All right, Facebook, we got a special treat for you. We were able to catch the final of the open men's singles cricket. We've got from the winner's bracket, Josh here in the uh, powder blue shirt. And the mask, Mike. Josh has the uh, the winner's bracket. He will have to be beaten twice. Two out of three, two out of three. All cricket. And it looks like Mike uh, won the flip and the right to go first. We didn't see Josh yet this weekend, but we did see a good bit of Mike in the mixed triples yesterday. He uh, he seemed to be playing pretty well, at least on bulls. So clearly must be playing cricket well as well. We already had one double dip on the stream. Get another. A slow start for Josh, but ever since, picking it up, and Mike with the start, doing a great job keeping Josh at arm's length. Nice seven mark there. Good switch over to the 18s. Both have two toys apiece. But Mike with that all-important 20. So three fats gives Josh a small lead after the super aggressive play from Mike. Going over to those 18s on his last turn, only going to find 120. So how much can Josh punish here? We see two. Slack darts, only a single mark for him as well. So nothing hurt for Mike's play. Continuing to be a little sideways on that 20. Again, only with a mark. Josh needs to step in here. Finds a trouble 19. Not the full punish that he was looking for, though. Early on, neither player finding triples with enough regularity to really take control of the leg. Would have expected these scores to be about a full mark higher than they are at this stage of the singles. Sure they've been there prior to this match. I do like that shot from Josh. Not taking a whack at the 20, using the two singles to take away the 17. I think Mike thought he was just going to chuck all three in there. That third one looked like he was halfway to the board when he threw it. Only two marks to follow. A 
Mike back on track on that treble 20. He scored, but not enough for the lead. Mike with a 37 point lead takes the 18. Josh now needs to find a new number. And only gets two marks. So towards the end here, looking like one way traffic for Mike to take the first leg. now with control this leg and shut down that 15 take the lead into the bulls Mask 1 0 up in the first set. Josh will have a start in leg number two. Cricket legs can go very fast. On this 15 inch board, Josh will want to uh, rectify that two mark open as quickly as possible. And it looks like Mike's gonna let him off the hook. Josh, I'm only going to follow with two marks, though. Mike, the first one to find a triple. It comes with dart 12 in the leg. Josh finally finds one as well. I'm sure there's some former opponents of Josh wondering where this was when, when he played them. I'm sure there's been some uh, quite a bit of time for Josh to stay warm after winning the king seat match.
One thing I do not know is if uh, if it was Mike and the mask previously. No, it looks like a, a Chris is who played Josh the first time. Chris Swanson from looking back at pictures. like the mask lost in the quarterfinals of the winner's bracket and has battled his way back here against Josh. Mike going to find 719 to score 133. Early doors, looking like Mike is on pace to win the first set 2-0, unless Josh can start hitting some triples. At least one's part of cricket. Finding the trouble one and trouble four there on either side. Just not going to do it. There it is, another seven mark. It shuts down the 18s and ahead to the 17s. Mike weighing his options there and somehow finding a way underneath his first dart over there on the 16th. Mike, two bulls away from winning this first set. Two straight. With little pushback from Josh. And there it is. First dart. Double bull. So first set winner here in the final, Mike the Mask. Second set coming up here. Mike. Josh will have the start. Josh really needs to come out with a strong leg here. Kind of stop the train from Mike. Good open there from Josh. I think that 18 was a flyer. No. Was just really? his, Just his reaction? That's my guess. Okay. I mean, obviously, he's, he's not giving it back, but that did not look like a uh, a very happy man that just hit a seven mark. Mike 
See, I I took that as where where is this been type of look, but you could be right. Not sure what Mike's doing here. Not realizing the eight teams are closed. So pretty much exactly what uh what I said Josh needed was to come out and put in a really strong leg. Well, he started really strong. See if he can actually close it out. Just put some doubt in Mike's mind that this isn't going to be a walk. Josh. Mike, not going to roll over though, puts three in the black to take the point lead. Needed all six of them. Probably still not enough. Well, it definitely <laughs> affected Josh. But he does manage to pull a triple 20 out. What a save. He doesn't hit that. And Mike needs a seven mark to uh, to win. Mike going to take the point lead and then close the 19. And the plan for Mike paid off as he will get a three dart finish here. Starts with a double bull. Not going to happen. So Josh now only need one bull to take leg number one of the second set. Josh is finally one leg away from winning this thing. He's going to set the board up. And Mike's going to get us started. And a must-win leg for Mike. Pile of twenties to open. Ooh, the slack turn there for Mike opens the door for Josh. No treble. So pretty much best case scenario for Mike after that shot. He 
he snags the treble 19. Josh not paying attention. Those at the closed number. I think him and Mike have a moment as uh, Mike did that in the last leg on the 18s. Josh only able to put in four seventeen. So Mike very much in control of this leg. Prime to tie it up at one leg apiece. Uh, Josh not able to follow the first. Really needed at least six, probably nine there. So Mike takes two to close that 17 and then pops in the double bull. The first dagger in the coffin for this leg. That's probably another one hammered in by Josh himself. Josh putting in 415 to close and score 15. But three singles needed for Mike. Tie us up at one leg apiece. One ball now. There it is. We are all knotted up. And we are going to have a cork for the decider for all the marbles. Bowl. So he will be the starter here in the deciding leg of the second set. Double dip is squarely on now for Mike the Mask. Which I believe should stick post-COVID. Well, he might be so used to throwing in the mask that post-COVID he still wears it. I would do a Bane impression, but I can't. <laughs> I thought about it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was born in darkness. <laughs> you, Miri, I adopted the night. <laughs> All right. 
right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Uh, so Mike did start slow, and Josh is punishing you. A complete turn of events. And now Mike, Mike rattle. Yeah, feeling the pressure. So the king seat holder comes out to play here. It was only a matter of time, really. And Josh, keep it going. And you see the the wrinkled face there as the uh, second dart goes wide. And he does not find the treble 18. So, purple patch, at least for the moment, over. And Mike's turn to start storming back with a huge nine mark. 108 scored, shuts down the 17. And after a flash of brilliance there from Josh, he's right back in the hot seat. Just want to take a quick opportunity to thank everyone for hanging out with us. This will be the last uh, commentated match. Um, I believe they'll tear down the stream as well um, for the, uh, the afternoon events. Um, but I'm not quite sure, so... Um, I can safely say this is the last one we're going to commentate on. Uh, greatly appreciate everybody supporting us, hanging out with us the last uh, couple of days into uh, the late hours last night and uh, back at it early this morning. We see Josh trying to make a fight back on that uh, 15. He's four bulls here. He's only going to hit two. So the mask going to walk up needing just a hat trick to pull off the double dip. And he's only going to hit two darts. Your open singles cricket champion, Mike. For Josh, an unfortunate double dip, but still second place, a good showing. And, uh, yeah, as Gordon said, appreciate everyone tuning in. If you are intrigued or want to visit or see when the next uh, Bullshooter Regional Tour or even the finals is going to be, please check out bullshooter.com so that we can actually get to commentate on your matches possibly. All right. So thank you, everybody. Uh, for Gordon Dixon, I'm DJ Sayre. And for Arachnid and Bullshooter, we appreciate you guys signing off. Thank you.